everyone, it's Daria. In this video, I wanted to go into Mural, another tool that can be extremely helpful for remote teams, whether you're facilitating a retrospective or you're just using it to collect data and information from everyone, or just facilitating any other type of discussion like a workshop or a working session. I wanted to go into the tool and show you what are some of the cool features it has. I have used it at the very beginning of the pandemic. Since then, they made some really great improvements. It has a bit of different um, features and functionality, I'd say, from Miro. I've been a huge Miro fan for a very long time. But I think that Mural also has some really cool features and it might be easier for you to use. So let's look into that. I'm going to be showing kind of a tutorial, but also learning with you as we look into more different features. And we will create a uh, same as we did last time, kind of an example retrospective, I think. We'll see what kind of templates they have. And um, also, this is something that I've noticed is that they have a free plan now. They didn't have it before, but right now they have a free plan. So you're able to create a free account if you want to try it out. So let's jump into the tool and see what we can do there. So we're on the pricing page. I just wanted to show you the differences between Mural and Miro pricing. And as you can see, Mural does have a free account and you have, can have three murals on your account. And since they are, they are actually endless, you can continue to add content on them. Maybe they will start to load a little bit slower, but you know, if you have working with one team, you can add all of the retrospectives in one mural. Just to compare to Miro, the free account um, obviously is, exists. It also gives you three editable boards. What I found, if we scroll, scroll down for the features, more specifically, when you're on a free account in Miro, you don't have access to voting or timer, which are very important, I think, when you're running workshops. You can replace voting with like a little dots, as I showed you in my Miro video. If you haven't seen it, you can go and watch it before after you finish this one, don't click off this video right away because that actually hurts the videos. So finish this video and then go to the next one. I'm going to put it in the description. Anyway, so we have voting timer. You cannot have it on the free version. You do have to have a paid version. But what I have noticed in the mural account, I have a free account. Yeah, so if you scroll down a bit, as you can see, facilitation superpowers features they are included in every plan. And I think this is a big difference and maybe something that will kind of make, help you make your mind on which tool you want to use because they're pretty similar. So this is my dashboard. At the bottom, you have many different templates. Say is Miro, lots of different templates you can use, but we're going to create our own. So we're going to create ours. So I'm clicking on new mural and the left top corner and we're going to just say infinite blank canvas i'm not going to use any templates it's generating the mural let's call it and we'll say team awesome so this will be the space for our team awesome we are here at this um, space and you can see that it might look different for you if you're just starting the new mural because they have recently updated the toolbars and how it all looks, really just their UI. If you go into the right top right corner, as you can see, you have this little button with stars or whatever that is that you can click on switch to classic mural. This is how the classic mural looks, right? So you can draw, you can add stickies and text and I absolutely hated the sliding out thing. <laughs> and this is just what made me hate it so much, I think, because it kind of moves all of the content with it. Now you can, once again, if you're seeing this on your mural, you can click on try upgraded mural and you're back to this UI, which I definitely prefer 100%. So here we are, let's get started. And let's look at the options that are available to us. 
So we have the sticky notes, obviously. We can click on the sticky notes here on the left, and we can add squares, rectangles, maybe even circles if we want to. I'm going to close it. Just going to remove all of this for now. We can add text. So click on the text headline. We can maybe say sprint one retro. And we're going to make it a little bit smaller. That's a big title. Okay, there you go. So we have sprint retro. You can do just a paragraph or a comment. Now you can add some shapes and connectors, right? Some lines and just different shapes if you want to. You can draw. Done drawing. Okay. You can add icons. So let's say I'm going to use this fire icon. Say that our sprint one was on fire. <laughs> okay. As you can see, you can choose many different icons. You can search for icons as well. And that is pretty handy. Can make you create a much more fun space. So you can add images. Obviously, you can just copy paste images in here. And then you have this. You have frameworks, which is a pretty neat feature. And that can help you organize the space. Now, before we kind of jump into that, I'm going to show you how to use that in a second. I just want to look for us to look at kind of everything that we have here. So we can create a table. And here is also a content library. As you can see, I have added something in here. There was nothing in here originally. And I can remove it from the library. And my library is empty, but it is pretty cool where you can actually select maybe a number of different items you have created. Maybe you have like a board, of, um, an empty board that you want to reuse. You can just select it, right click, and then save to content library. There you go. And as you can see, I've just saved it into the content library and I can still start creating it. And it just adds actually all of the elements separately. So this is pretty neat feature. I really like it. It can be very useful. You have the templates feature in Miro as well. So that is very similar to what you have in Miro. It's just organized a bit differently. Now we are on the board here to be able to move around. It's a bit different from Miro. You need to hold the left button on your mouse. So just to move around, right? I'm holding the button. Uh, if you want to select the item, you just click on it. But say you want to select multiple items. Hold Shift and same. Hold Shift. Hold the left button on your mouse. And you can select multiple things at the same time. So we will be moving a little bit. Let's just imagine that we are going to use this framework. So why are these things really neat? Well, you click on the frameworks, you have all of the different grids and areas or all of the different small, tiny templates, but you can just use the freeform area. And if you click on it, it just kind of pops up this little area here and you can basically add elements into this area. So now it's inside of this area and when I move it, well, everything moves together. So if I'm Add in a sticky note, which you can also add by double tapping. I don't want to add circle notes. I can actually switch the type of the note. And I'm going to make it into uh, this type of note. And we'll create a few more. So I have all of these notes created here. And as you can see, if I'm moving the whole area, well, everything moves together. That is pretty handy. A few cool features also that may be very helpful for you. So when you select this area, as you can see, it is an unnamed area. We can say title, something title, right? But if you don't want to have it there, you can actually turn it off. So you select the framework and then you have this little menu that pops up. And at the top, you can toggle title. You no longer have a title there. Perfect, right? You can also use a different background color. So let's just use this yellow color. Next important feature that I really like overall, regardless of 
whether you're running retrospectives or workshops, but especially useful for workshop is the outline. So in the top right corner, there is this outline button. So if you click on the outline on the right side, you have this little menu that will add all of the slides or pages or frames basically in there to help you quickly navigate between them. Right now, there is nothing in there, but as you can see, I can add, choose this little thing, the my frame, the yellow frame, right click on it, and I can add it to outline. And then I can add a title. So now I have this little frame. So let's let's just move away somewhere here. When I click on it, I am brought back, back to the same place. So this is pretty neat. And then obviously, if you want to add one more page, let's add another frame. Let's actually copy paste this frame. Control C, Control V. Okay. And this will be our Sprint 2 Retro. It doesn't automatically appear in the outline. So you need to actually select it. And you add it to the outline. And there you go. So you have the outline. You can quickly jump between the two pages. Let's make it different colored so that we can easily distinguish them. So we have our little sprint retro space in here. So let's make it a little bit bigger and we are going to create a little retro template here. I will be creating a starfish. It's a pretty easy retro technique, mostly useful for mature teams who have been working together for a long time and already have some ideas to add to the board. Let's find a star. Okay. I'm going to use this starfish. Let's change the color to Patrick color. There you go. Be a little Patrick right here. If you know what I mean, you know what I mean. <laughs> okay. And uh, let's add little lines to separate it all, just to help us separate it. And now we have five different spaces on the board. So the starfish basically asks the questions around what can we do differently? What do we want to start doing, stop doing, continue doing, want to do more of, or want to do less of? And I'm going to create little spaces for the each of the items we want to create, right? So start, start doing. So you have all of these spaces basically around it, and this is how you go about brainstorming, right? You use these, you ask the question to the team and give them some time to brainstorm. Now, in order for the team to not like move everything around, it's important to block the content. So we're going to select everything apart from this. I'm going to select everything, I'm holding shift. And once you have selected everything, you can lock all of the objects. So I have locked all of the objects. Now I can select them, but only because I'm a facilitator. I can unlock them, but only because I'm a facilitator, but I cannot move them. So that kind of saves the way how it is all organized. Let's prepare our little space for the team so that they come in and they have already all of the sticky notes ready for them to take in. Okay, so I have used different colors of the sticky notes just to kind of differentiate them because I feel that it is easier to organize just visually. So you have those, all of these sticky notes. Basically, we can say that our retrospective is ready, our space is ready right here, and let's share it with our team. So it's pretty easy. Same, we in the top right corner, you can click on the share button and you can either include guests or members or you can add visitors. That is the easiest one, basically. Visitors, you copy the link, copy it. As you can see, whoever has the visitor link can edit. If you obviously want people to participate, you want to give them the right to edit. Copy it, and now we're going to go to an incognito tab so that I'm not logged in, and to see what it looks like, 
if I'm just visiting. So we are in the incognito tab. It means that I'm not logged in and I can go to the mural as a visitor, someone who doesn't have an account. And so here you go. This is the first thing that happens when I am visiting someone's board that was shared with me. And I can just immediately enter as a visitor. I don't need to put my name in. So let's enter as a visitor. It gives you a little quick tutorial here. doesn't matter. Here we are on this board as a visitor. And say I'm kind of in somewhere here on the board and I have no idea where I am. Same as in Miro. Just find facilita the facilitator and I can click on the facilitator and it will bring me to the same space, to the same view that the facilitator has. And I can also navigate using the outline if I want to. But I'm going to close it and I'm just going to look at this space. So let's imagine that we are starting our brainstorming session. I'm going to go back as a facilitator. So here I am a facilitator. I can see where our visiting bird was. So if I would be moving around, I would be able to see. But what do we want to do? Let's close our outline and we can start the timer. Same at the top right corner, you have all of these features that we'll, we'll look at. You can set the timer. Let's put the three minutes. You can even choose the alarm sound, but it doesn't matter. And we start the timer and I can see it, how much time is left. Now we're going back to our visitor. So here I am as a visitor, as you can see, I'm not logged in and I can see the timer too. It is in a different space for a few reasons. And I think this is something that will change. As you can see on the left here, still in the old UI with this sliding menu, absolutely hate it. <laughs> and I don't think you can actually switch to a new UI unless you have an account, but I think they will be rolling it out slowly and then everybody will have the same view. Why I'm saying that is because in the old UI, the timer is here on the left side at the, at the top. And it's not very visible, to be honest. If I go back, well, now I am the facilitator. So I'm on new UI, as you can see. So I prefer this view because it's much easier to see. So let's add some things in here. And let's imagine that we're going to pause our timer for now. Let's imagine that we have a team and maybe people don't want to really show what they're writing. Maybe you don't have a lot of trust yet or it's a new team. So you want to give them a space to add their ideas without being judged, right? And you can use, in this case, anonymous voting or anonymous private mode. This is a pretty cool feature that I don't think exists in Miro. In the top right corner, once again, we have the timer, but we have this little guy incognito and um, we can click on it and we can start the private mode. So in private mode, other people's content will be hidden from you and only you will see your own content. And as a facilitator, I may decide, do we want to reveal who have created different notes or not? Why would you want to maybe use this mode? First of all, as I said, if you have maybe trust issues in the, com in the team and you want them to just have the space, so you would say, no, keep authors of this content anonymous so that no one knows who created what. But maybe you just don't want people to have bias to start reading what others are writing, and but you still want them to know who wrote what then you might want to decide, well, yes, show authors once we finish the private mode. Let's say I'm not going to show anything. We are in the private mode now. Got it. So let's put in some of the notes. I'm going to just select one of the cards right here as a facilitator. Remember, and I'm going to restart our timer. There you go. I'm going to select this card and let's say I'm going to add something. What can we start doing? Start exercising. As you can see, I am select. I have selected this card. I am now marked as an um, incognito person. Now let's go into our visitor view. I am now in my visitor view. Once again, I got the same message saying, hey, we're in a private mode. 
no one's going to see what you're writing. Got it. And here's what's happening. Well, I cannot actually see who is adding this note. I know that there potentially will be a note, but I can't see what's written there and I don't know who added it. Well, let's put, say I'm going to add something else here. We're going back to our facilitator view. Same, as a facilitator, I only have, can see that someone is editing this card, but I don't really know what they're writing or who is doing that. So our timer is almost out and we will say, hey, let's end private mode. You will reveal all content added as well as any changes made to the existing content during the private mode. Okay, so let's reveal. And our timer is, is up. And now we can see all of the content that has been added. So this private mode is a really cool feature and I really appreciate it. And I think that it can be very, very useful, especially if your team, everybody has an account and they're logging in and kind of everybody knows who is who. Well, using the, that private mode can be very helpful. Say we want to do some voting in here. And the same, we can do the voting session here. So we're going to click on voting, the same. And we're going to start a voting session. Sprint one brainstorming. I'm going to give everyone three votes. And same, who can end voting? Obviously, as a facilitator, you don't want people just to randomly end voting. This would be the most logical setting. We also don't want people to vote on icons or just on text. So we're going to remove all of these so that they're only voting on sticky notes. And uh, we also don't want people to vote on the entire canvas, especially if you have multiple uh, retrospectives or multiple spaces for brainstorming in there, because, well, obviously you want people to focus on one area. So we can say selected section, we can click next. And now, as you can see, this selected section right now, just added automatically, it actually takes in this little sticky note that is sitting in Spring 2. I don't want that. So I'm going to say only these sticky notes, this area are actually the ones we want to vote on. So we can start three votes per person. And the voting session is running. The same, say you're starting a voting session, you can start a timer. Say we have one minute to vote, add your votes by clicking on the item. If you want to remove your vote, you hold shift and you click on the item. That's it. And let's say I am voting on these items. I have finished voting. I can vote end a voting session because I'm a facilitator. But, well, the visiting bird didn't actually finish voting. Well, let's go to our visiting bird. That is our visiting bird view. Well, voting session is running. I would like to vote as well. I'm going to vote on this, on this, and on this. Great. I have finished. I can see who voted, how many votes are left. Going back to here, well, let's end voting session. I'm the facilitator. I can do that. And we can see the results. Okay, so the bin late seems to be the winner with three votes. Now I can actually close the results. But as you can see, I still have votes being highlighted here. So you can see highlight votes. This is a little toolbar that appears at the top. I can close it. And once I close it, I no longer see the results. If we want to go back and see the results, I would need to click on voting again. And now I can see either the results page or show the votes. So we're highlighting the votes again, or maybe you just want to go back to the results page together with everyone and show it to them. You can do that too. And then the other feature that I absolutely love, I found it uh, when I was checking it out, mural and kind of understanding how it works, is the laser pointer. So you click on the laser pointer right next to the private mode. And now when you are moving the mouse, everybody sees where the mouse is going. So we can say, hey, we're going to talk about this being late stuff. Absolutely awesome. This is so cool. I absolutely love that. That can help you actually bring everyone's attention to the same place. Then escape. 
and we're no longer in the laser point, pointer mode. As you remember, we also have the outline here. So this is pretty cool. And now you can also download it. So at the top left corner, you have the download button. Click on the download button. Okay, great. You have your uh, download options. PDF file, image, etc., etc. Well, if we want to do a PDF file, but we just don't want the whole thing, just like a screenshot of everything, but we want to use the outline as our pages, well, we can click on the outline instead. This will download the content in the murals outline, and we can click on download. Okay, I downloaded the PDF. Let's open it right here. And as you can see, I have my PDF with two pages, which basically to the outline and just shows me the outline. Now here's where you can see my beef with Mural, and I hope they're gonna fix it. The pages are not the same size, and you can't really standardize them unless you basically copy paste, right? So if I zoom out, I'm going back to uh, Mural, I, if I want to have the exactly the same size as this one, I can't really like choose nine by 16, right? Or, or a square, I cannot do that. I can only, you know, try to say, okay, let me match it to this other frame. Okay, now it is the same size, but you're not gonna do that for every frame. You can obviously say, okay, instead of just creating a new frame, I'm gonna copy paste this one. It's not in our outline, remember. Now I need to add it to my outline. And now when I'm going to download a PDF, everything's going to be the same. Yeah, so here you go. If we zoom out a little bit, as you can see, all of the pages are the same now because I matched them to each other, but you can't really do it easier and i think this is my biggest problem right now with mural is that you can't kind of standardize the sizes and if i were to create a big presentation or workshop it will be a bit of a pain to have to add every frame or framework as they call it into the outline and then making sure that they're all the same size because i am a bit ocd about that <laughs> Okay, one more thing that I want to show you is that uh, hiding feature, basically hiding the slides, similar to Miro. If you click here, you can actually hide this content. Like this is the outline though. So you do need to use the outline and I just can hide it. Okay, so as it says, Sprint One Retro, this content will be hidden until it's re revealed by a facilitator. No peeking. So that is pretty handy if you have a workshop maybe with many, many slides, you can hide the content and then reveal it as you go along. So that is the last cool feature that you can use. Okay, let's remove my glasses. And there you go. This is Mural, a quick tutorial just to show you the ropes, really the most important features to get you started. And of course, as you continue to use the tool, the better you will become, the easier it will become for you to use it. And the more you will be able to adjust it to exactly what you want it to be. I hope this was helpful. I hope that showed you what you can do and gave you an idea maybe for the next retro, as well as some of the cool features that you can use with your team and the fact that some of those features may not be available in Miro, that might be a factor for you to choose Mural instead. And if this is the case, great. I mean, they have some really cool features. I've been using Miro for this whole time, really. I love it. And um, now that I look at Mural, they do have some really good improvements and I appreciate that. So we'll see what happens, how it goes. Anyway, that's everything I wanted to cover in this video. If you liked it and if you learned something new, remember to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this YouTube channel for more similar content. If you are interested in learning a particular tool, let me know, share in the comments, what are some of the tools that you think are pretty cool or, 
or you are using right now and you're loving it, or maybe just a tool you want me to review to make a very quick tutorial on. And I hope to see you in the next video. Cheers and scrum on. Oh, 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 o